This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, we're going to do a little twist today on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, because usually I have uh, one of our sponsors at the bottom of the hour, and that is one of them is the amazing and flexible and creative and award-winning Nick Zellinger with NZ Graphics. And in talking with Nick, because we have been up to our eyeballs in dealing with a couple of messes over the past month of rescuing books. And so I thought, why don't we just do an entire show around the the interior and exterior, the book covers, as well as what's on the inside. And there's some unique twists for fiction and nonfiction, I think, especially with cover design, as well as the interior design. And there are things that newbies need to do um, and get into. Um, and so we want to get into that. So, Nick, why don't we just start off with what what are, what are the fatal mistakes? Oh, well, thanks for having me on, Judith, first of all. I think that there are so many common uh, errors that authors, whether they're newbies or even second-time authors, get into that uh, distract them from a uh, uh, you know, successful goal and actually winding up costing not just a lot of money, but a lot of grief and embarrassment, too. I mean, once your book is out there, you know, you're up against everything. I mean, your competition is everything. Indie publishing is huge. We all know that. So, but it's up your, with all the awards competitions that are out there, a lot of indie books are being, uh, you know, competing up against uh, traditional publishing. So that's your competition. So you, it's got to look good. So if you've got a book that comes out and you realize, gosh, I didn't pay enough money for editing or I didn't get it edited or I didn't, or I had a friend do my, cover design uh, to give them a chance, and it winds up being uh, a total mess. And we've, you know, we've, you already mentioned that. We've got a couple of books that we've had to deal with uh, this past month that are good examples of that. So, you know, you want to start off on the right foot, and a lot of that is just prepping your, uh, your project in advance. So and, what steps, yeah. Nick, then would you go through in prepping? And, there, there, you know, we do have both the interior and exterior. So um, what would you say, I mean, we can get into, and I think we should get into detail, some of the hiccups we see. Sure. But, but, but what would they do, like step one, step two, step three? And let's, why don't we start with just the cover? Yeah, I will start the, we'll start with the cover and let's, let's just say uh, you're a, this is your first book. Mm-hmm. And you're writing a business book or you're writing a how-to book. It doesn't really matter. But you've you've got a title and you like your title, and you know what your subtitle is if it's a non-fiction, non-fiction book, for instance. So uh, the first thing, and and it's a pretty easy thing to do. It's just a little. I wouldn't say it's legwork, but it's eye work and finger work. You you just do your research. You go online, and you find out what your competition is. And by no by that I mean. What's your audience? What, who are you writing to? And I know everyone thinks, well, gee, everyone's my audience, but that's really not the case. You've either you've got a specific demographic that you're you're trying to target with your book. So go to Amazon, go to Barnes and Noble online, go to other books online bookstores, or go to a bookstore and find out the books that you would be directly competing against, and seeing how they look, what the aesthetics of those books are. What the size, trim size of them are is, you know, whether it's a five and a half by eight and a half or a six by nine or some other custom size. Look at look at the covers, examine the covers, see uh, the impact the title makes or the subtitle makes, uh, and see what imagery, if any, they've used. Did they use photography? Did they use um, illustration? Did they not have either? Did they just have uh, an interesting type style with color? Um, and look at all of that. 
just as a front cover, first of all, and see what pops and see, you know, just research what your competition will be, what your, what will your book go head to head with, and how can it compete and how can you better that. Now, if you're, you know, a first time author, you may not know, gee, what am I, what should I look for? But, you know, I mean, it's, it's partially subjective, partially marketing. You, you know, most of us know what we like when we see something. And that's the design, you know, that's the end goal of any designer. Get something interesting, create something that somebody will go to. And if you get somebody to do that, you've you've already done something that you're supposed to do, which is, you know, get them to click on a book or pick up a book. Well, you know, in, in that we there's a book that you and I've been working on this past week that is uh has a little bit of an exotic feel to it. And I think the author really wanted to make it very exotic and it, it just really wasn't working. And that one of our concerns, and I and I expressed it initially to you, and then I expressed it to her, was I felt that there was such an ethnic twist to it, and that's really was what she was trying to say uh, within her book, which is a memoir type of book, and that it it uh, the way it was going down that she was driving for, actually I thought would kill sales potential sales just by turning people off with the visual yeah i agree I, you, you limit that or you uh you've already pigeonholed yourself into, into such a small audience that you can't climb out of it and in the process of cover design that happens sometimes uh, you'll go down one road because i mean as a as a designer for me I, it's it's good to obviously obviously have initial consultation but even then, most some there are some authors that have a really what they believe is a set path they want to take with their vision for the book. In most cases, that may not always be correct. And in the case of this writer, it, it was that it was that very same thing. It was she was so intent on the visual of this that didn't see the bigger picture, which is being you know being more acceptable to a wider audience because the message that she has is so powerful. So. As uh, we went through the design process, and this sometimes happens, on, unfortunately for me as a designer, because you wind up doing uh, maybe dozens of iterations on a cover that you know is slowly dawning on you that while it's pretty and aesthetically pleasing, that doesn't mean that doesn't translate to the proper cover for you. In other words, I mean anyone who's got Photoshop out there or Adobe Illustrator and has some skills can make something beautiful, but that doesn't translate to what is the right cover for your book and what's going to sell the book. So we we had we hit that roadblock uh, at some point where we realized this isn't going to work as a visual uh, because it's just it's the wrong approach for this book. So we switched gears, totally switched gears, and but that happens and that's that's better now than when you go back and have to rescue a book totally if it's been printed. Well, Right, and and I will have to tell you about this one book that we are talking about is that it uh, someone else saw it in my office today and who literally said, this is really elegant, which I think is great fun to have it evolve to where we got it to. Yes, yeah, that's a nice thing to hear, and and that was the that was the that was the direction we were trying to shoot for, and uh, and it's accessible to a larger audience and still uh, retains. Um, you know, a lot of the qualities that she has in the message that she wants to. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, so let's come back to that. Um, mm -hmm. The cover design and and what they look like, because I think one of the things that you said that was so critical here is that you need to go out. That means you need to physically go out. Don't look at it all on just um, Amazon site or yeah. Barnes & Noble site or whatever because there is an absolute distinct feel where you can visual, you know, visually pick it up and feel from the texture and everything else of a cover. And there's someone I knew I came across and I thought it was a hoot, kind of scary, but he has the last name of Patterson and he writes in fiction and mm -hmm. he models the top of every one of his books, just like James Patterson. I know who he is too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you you do know who he is. Yeah. And yeah. and and then and, and I watched that, and then I thought, whoa! And I thought, could he get he could he get his hoo hoo in the ringer here? But for 
but because there is a, a, I don't know if he's tried to trade Patterson, the original has tried to trademark it, or but I guess that uh, I would. I'll tell you if I, as an author, if you settle down and I know you and I have developed what the author you look. And I'm real clear, that's what I want that author you for our book series to have that look. And I wouldn't be real thrilled if someone was duplicating it exactly. Yeah, he, he chartered it, went into some uncharted territory there, and I'm not sure about there's an un, there might be an unspoken code about you don't do that. But there also might be some legal ramifications, but he's had several titles out in its work. But he just pretty much got on the coattails of that name and used that initial kind of look. Uh, but you're right. I mean, author use developed a, uh, a standard now with producing so many award-winning books, and that goes back to what you just said earlier by going to a store, going to Barnes and Noble, or going to, to some bookstore and picking up a book because uh, you know a lot of the on-demand printers online offer you know one of two kinds of books. They'll offer a matte cover, which is a soft cover. And then they'll offer a, a coated cover, which is a C1S cover, which is basically coated on the outside, uncoated on the inside. That's pretty much their down and dirty AB offerings. But as you know, as you know, we work with dozens of printers across the United States who are book printers, and they offer many different options. So when you go to a bookstore, you can actually see sometimes and feel sometimes the difference between the quality of paper on the cover. Uh, versus just a coated stock, or if, if a cover has, say, a spot coating, which is a, a varnish on a particular mm-hmm. element, like something like a title or an image, and then the rest of it's matte, or an emboss or a raised, uh, raised emboss stamp look. So you can feel all these. These are those are all custom features for a cover. Obviously, you, those are extras in a lot of ways. But if your book demands that and you feel it does, it's really good to see something like that in person. Tactile feel of a, a book is real important and uh, you know we are talking about a product here so it's you know it's right. your product okay so when we come back we're going to dive more into that yep. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract. All equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author You and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author You deal. Every picture tells a story. 
And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, my my guest is with me this afternoon, Nick Zellinger, who is an ace at creating award-winning covers as well as interiors for books. And and I'm very proud to say that he was the designer of my last book, Author You, Creating and Building Author and Book Platforms, which we just picked up three national awards. Um, and I know it's I know the content's good, but I know that the cover is rock star and grabs you, and it's just visually the right thing interior, and that's all because of what Nick does. So what we're talking about is some of the common mistakes that people make and what really newbies, uh, who I often call eaglets, need to know as they get started, and it's the prep. So first of all, what is the, the, the authors who are out there that the big boys are producing? Not not your neighbor and the person down the street who is also starting out on the smaller scale. What are the big boys producing in your genre that you can go down to your closest bookstore and just kind of salivate over and look at what they're doing and how they're treating their cover design and texture, and then you look inside. All right, anything else you want to add there, Nick? Well, that's true, and then and just to, rem- to remind people who are newbies at this, uh, you know, all most designers who do who do book designs have the same. We're using the same software and the same creative uh, platforms that any of the other traditional houses are using. We're all using, you know, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, Quark Express. So uh, there's no, with the exception of who you. Uh, who your service provider is as a, either a book designer, editor, or whatever, you know, if you pick the right one, there's really no reason why you can't compete with those big, big titles. Uh, it's just a question then of, um, you know, slash talent, commitment, slash, um, you know, um, mm-hmm. dedication, and um, working together. It's teamwork. We, we know from experience that it's not a one-sided thing. You don't give a designer one thing and then let them go. You do consult, and you, it's a team. It's a team effort to get, you know, your the best result you can. Well, and then the other side of that, Nick, is that I think that if someone does that prep work and goes down to a physical bookstore and just looks over and sees what pops, 
Um, it, it's like uh, a month ago, I had Nick Taylor on, who really is in the ebook world and designing. Mm-hmm. And he says, you got to think of like covers like a hot date. You know, when you go in looking for a hot date, you don't look across and say, mmm, she makes a great casserole. You think, mmm, she's hot. So you need to think about that also with your book covers. And then you tell your designer you're working with, saying, here are the covers that just really pop and resonated with me and you will you will just shortcut this whole circuit of, yeah, of getting true. to it because then they know what track you're going down that's true i mean i get i mean i get everything from uh i know what i exactly what i want don't veer from this to i have no idea what i want just give me something and those are the two worst case scenarios i mean you i mean some sort of guide work is always really good and consultation can help narrow that a little bit just by talking and like I said doing the research we talked about I mean I've had uh, authors take their uh, layout covers that I've designed for them and take them down to a Barnes and Noble and stick you know mock up a book and stick it on the shelf next to these other books and walk away and look at them uh, mm-hmm. just to see what it looks like in a real real environment you know because Nick, Nick Taylor is right I mean your cover it's the same. It's the same as anything. It's the same as your house. You know, you're selling your house, uh, and uh, you want curb appeal. So you're not gonna, you know, you're gonna take the flamingo out of the yard, and you're gonna uh, not paint it a strange color, but you're gonna make it look good so that people will want to go. I want to see what's inside, and then the cover is the same thing. It's the first thing that anyone's gonna see of your work, and there's no reason why it can't just absolutely pop and be dynamic. And a lot of that, like I said, starts first with some research. And narrowing narrowing that field of choices so that you have some way to uh, uh, direct a designer to down a path to uh, get what you want. And then I I think that we we also should say that sometimes the the marriage doesn't work. Sometimes the designer just doesn't get what you get, or they just can't bring it about. And I think it at what point. I'm sure you've had these situations, Nick. It's just not working. Do you throw in the towel and say, let me refer you to someone else? Yeah, I've had that several times. And, uh, you know, even after I thought that I was getting what they wanted, but it just wasn't a right fit, didn't do what they want. So every every designer's had that. Uh, And then there's also, going back to the... uh, the, you know the overseeing and the uh, and the and the kind of prep work. Uh, you know when you're getting layout when a, a author is getting layouts from a designer, they also need to know how to vet those covers. I mean how to if they're really at a loss for um, at determining gee what what cover I got A B and C what cover do it, is going to work the best. I'm in a quandary. I don't know. You know there's a lot. I mean we have a lot of authors we know that um, have a contest with these covers or they have a voting on it just to get some sort mm-hmm. of a focus group on it. Uh, but I've also had the other extreme where uh, I've had an author just this week say, well, you know, I just showed it to my family, and my, my wife likes this one. And I said, I said well, that's, that's nice, but is she a marketing expert? Is she a publisher? No, no, she just knows me very well. I said, well, does yeah. she know your audience very well? So yeah. you get, you get, no, the, no, no, the question is you have to say, the, the person you go to, are they a buyer of your book? Yeah. yeah I think not, that's not a, a critical friend, yeah. thing. And, and, you know, when people are starting to give their input, because I've had those discussions just in the last two weeks with a couple of people who are kind of shredding and doing these things, and to come back and say, are they the buyers of your book? Are they people you're going and just asking about and contents? If they're not going to buy one of your books, do you really care? Yeah. Do you want their opinion at all? Does it matter? And it do- obviously, it doesn't matter. You're looking for the people who actually lay down some money, or getting it off Amazon, or actually going down to a store and buying your book. So that's that's the whole. That's really the only thing you need to be worried about and concerned about. So, uh, that, I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell, really. Okay, so let's let's switch gears, and mm-hmm. we've got that you've got the the, the exterior uh, on the front. What about the back? Well, the back, and then I usually tell this, and I hear, heard, have heard you say this to clients too. Think of your back cover as your sixty-second elevator speech. When you're in an elevator and somebody says, "Oh, what's your book about?" You've got one or two floors to tell them 
what it is. So you've got less than 200 words or maybe just about 200 words to say to them what your book is about. So it's got to be succinct. It's marketing copy is what it really is. I mean, there is some slight differences between nonfiction and fiction. In fiction, you have a little leeway. You could have a passage from the book, something that's evocative of the storyline or something, but it's still marketing. You're still marketing it. But for nonfiction, for instance, uh, you know, People like to read bullet points. They like to read bang, bang, bang. What am I getting from this book? Asking them a question, then solving that question by giving them the answer. You know, are you lonely? Are you dating? You know, are you dating a moron? Or are you are you uh, are you in debt up to your eyeballs? And then you give them, um, you know, you give them the answer. No. Well, if you are, I've got the answer here, and I've got the answer in bang, bang, bang. These many th- many steps. Uh, and then, you know, the use of testimonials or, or endorsements, uh, we go around and around about this. If it's somebody no one knows, then don't use it. I mean, if you've got a mm-hmm. fantastic, if Stephen King says this is a great first novel from a gifted author, you know, you want that all over your cover. But if it's, uh, you know, um, Grandma Louise, who was a teacher once and said this is a great, you know, I just love this book, that's great, that's really nice, but it's not going to sell your book, so... The use of testimonials is crucial, but only if it's if it pertains to the market that you're selling it to. So, yeah, and th- here's the other belief about a lot of the testimonials: most people <clears throat> don't believe that they were even written by the person, <laughs> and and second, which is I think um, a hard thing to chew on. I, I know that uh, one of our mutual friends, Bob Vanerak, actually got one of the last endorsements from Stephen Covey before he died. Mm. So that has that really does have true value, and especially in the leadership area. That was quite a, a feather in his cap. But the reality is I'd rather not waste my space, you know, as an author myself and someone who buys his author on testimonials unless they are rock stars. And if they're not rock stars in the genre the people that are buying these books are going to be attracted to, I would take a pass. and But but then we need to say, we have 30 seconds before our next break, but what mm-hmm. you need to say is, so what do you do with these endorsements? Well, you put them on the opening page. That's right, praise cover. for your title, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and praise. This is if people are talking about or, you know. Yeah. Uh, something, and then you can actually give it a little bit fuller, and you can give a variety, which might have a lot more clout. All right, we're going to be right back. Nick Zellinger is with me this hour. We're talking about books, Inside and Out, and some of the mistakes, the snafus that are commonly done. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers 
allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And with me is Nick Zellinger of NZ Graphics, and his email is nzgraphics at comcast.net, or you can go to his website, nzgraphics.com, and look at some of his work and connect with him that way. But we've been talking about, really, we're interiors and exteriors, more on the exterior right now, that that your, your key part of your back cover is all about marketing, marketing, marketing. And uh, this is where you're going to do your major selling piece. That front cover is to say, whoa, stop the train, get off, and pay attention to me, um, and pick me up. So keep that in mind and make sure, just a quick summary, make sure that you look at what everything is out there that is current in your in your genre that you're competing with and you pay attention to color you 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 pay attention to layout you pay attention to their imagery and everything else in that all right so let's hop over nick to the interior okay all right so we we so far you've you've hooked us the covers there we kind of like what we're reading on the back what are we going to do next well, to understand the interior, and, and I know, and this has comes from some experience, there are some authors that w- we're going to assume most of, most authors use Microsoft Word uh, to write their manuscript, and, and you know, Guy Kawasaki at, at the uh, Extravaganza mentioned that too. It's it's a tool you need to write your manuscript to always keep it updated. But that, as in as far as the layout, that's as far as it goes. I mean, um, all designers will take a Microsoft Word document as raw text and then dump it in as raw text into either Adobe InDesign or Quark Express. Those are the two major page layout programs for books. And uh, some have preferences more than others for which one they work with. I, I use both. I, I'm better at Quark because I've done it longer, but they're, they have the same result. They're both great book programs. So going back to Word, though, treat the author should just treat it as a raw manuscript. Now, there are cases where an author has been working on a book for years and they formatted headers and footers and they formatted the book to look as close to a book as possible. And that's fine because you can understand why someone would want to do that just so they get a feel for the flow of the book and how it's structured and hierarchies of subtitles and headings. So that in mind, most designers will use that Word file as a visual as a guideline when they're doing the format so they can keep that integrity there or uh, keep some of the styles when they import it into both those programs. So, uh, but basically the designer takes that, that file and then determines obviously the trim size of the book and the, the margins, the gutters. The gutter is your inside area of your book. So if you, uh, if you think you've got something like an 80 to 100,000 Word file, your gutter is going to want to be a little wider because your text has in, is in danger of falling into the spine of the book when it's printed, so you want to have a little more of a generous spine on the inside. But in terms of just the uh, flow of the book, you know, your first page is your either your title page or your half-title page, and that's on the right side. So your right side pages are your odd page numbers, and your obviously even page numbers are your left side page. So you either start with a couple of ways of, like, like you mentioned earlier, if you've got a, a lot of endorsements, you might start with praise for your book and then have the full testimonial run, you know, run of uh, text through that. 
before it gets to a half title page, which is basically your title, and then a blank page, and then you're, you start up with a title page, a full title page, which is your title and your subtitle and your name, author name, maybe some graphics if there or a publishing name or logo. And then the six, the six, excuse me, the next page would be your copyright page, which is your legalese page or your copyright notification. So that's the general flow of the front matter. Uh, more often than not, that fo- is followed on the right side by a dedication or a disclaimer if it's a medical book or something. Uh, and then another blank page, and then your table of contents, usually if it's a, uh, if it's a nonfiction book. And then we've got, you know, forward and, or introduction or a preface. So those, all those follow kind of a standard order. When you're doing a nonfiction book, and it's either a business book or even actually mostly memoirs right now, you want, might consider, always consider to have your chapter start on the right side of the page. Uh, so it's always that fiction has the you know the luxury of not having that. You can kind of just do a continuous flow from chapter to chapter. Well, one of the things that I think that is a, a truly a telltale sign of a self-published book versus a professional or small press or traditional published is that nonfiction does start on the right side, the uh, the odd pages. And, yeah. and so, so you'll have, you know what, you're going to have a few extra more pages in your book, but it will be all the difference between telling, is it a do it or do it yourself project, or did you really get a little work done into it? That's a and, red and, flag for yeah book reviewers. When they flag. see something like yeah. that, they'll just call it right away. Yeah, it's a red um, flag. The other thing is, I should say on a disclaimer, sometimes you'll find disclaimers on the copyright page if there's enough room in there. Correct, yeah. Instead of using a whole page on that. And the other thing I'm seeing move around, because we're talking about the front matter, is that you'll often see acknowledgments up here thanking everybody for, you know, making it possible. Mm-hmm. And um, But but also, it can go in the back matter of the book, too. And I yeah, think I, that mean, if you're, I mean, I think if you're a first-time author um, and no one's heard of you and you've got a great book, you might consider having your acknowledgments at the end of the book, because in the beginning, no one's going to know who you are or, or the people you're thanking. They'll skip over that. Uh, but if you get it at the end of the book and they've enjoyed your read, they'll more, be more than happy to read that and appreciate, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the text that's there. So it's it's kind of wasted up in the front if you're a newbie. Uh, well, the other thing is with that is that because when you start counting the pages to front matter, if you're going to do a half title and a full title page, you know, there's four pages yep. <laughs> right in there. And you've, uh, you, you have to have that copyright up front. And if you're going to have people are saying you rock, that could be a couple of more pages. And you, may, you don't want to get it too weighty because my experience, and, and I should also say this, if you're going to have a, a prologue, or a foreword, or an introduction. You want to think really uh, seriously about this because if you're going to end up with 25, 30 pages of all this front, people are going to say, I'm out of here. So, That's true because it's like a bad, long pre-dinner speech, and then you're just, <laughs> just not going <laughs> to. The, the, no, it's the introduction that's longer than the speech yeah. <laughs> for the person giving it. But but so you might want to think about that. Or sometimes when a lot of people, a lot of authors, especially in nonfiction, uh, put a lot of work into an introduction. You know, this is what brought them here. Their heart's here. There's a variety of things going on. And my attitude is this. If this is, is so important, you really want them to read it, then you start off your introduction on page one, so they get it. Yeah. But that's yeah. just my two bits. That's true. Otherwise, you've got, uh, or, you know, and obviously page numbering, you take that into account. Where does page one start and versus your front matter? The front matter could either have no page numbers or they could be Roman numerals, mm-hmm. but you, you decide on that. So introduction is page one, and that, that way you're telling the reader, this is the, this is the narrative, this is the book starting now. So you can mm-hmm. get through that, but you're right. Too much front matter, and that's a, that's a killer. Another real telltale sign of what we derogatory, derogatory call a self-published book is when your margins are so wide. And you can just look at a book if you see text going uh, more than uh, a half inch closer to the um, you know the edge of the page. And I've got a number of books here from way back that I've picked up that have that. That's another telltale sign that you just, it's just bad formatting. You want white spaces, your friend in books. Uh, 
And then point size, the, you know, with the font, you, font style you choose or the designer chooses uh, or the many font styles that they choose uh, make a big difference and the size. I mean, you know, when you've got a 5.5 by 8.5 book, normally you will never see 12-point or larger type. It's somewhere, some increment of 11 to 12 points with some generous letting, and letting is basically the space between uh, the lines of uh, text. Not, mm-hmm. In other words, double space. If you have a 12-point type and you've got a double space book, your letting is 24, so you never want that either. So a good book interior designer will know how, how generous to get with uh, point size and letting size and then margins too. Those are that, that aesthetic can make or break a book at a heartbeat because, first of all, the reader will see it right away, and a book reader, a book reviewer will see it, and they'll tag it as either a really good professional endeavor or something that's what they call self-published or, you know, just vanity press or something like that. Yeah, and that and that and that, uh, dear listener, is not where you want to go. All right, so we've got we've talked about gutters a little bit, and that the fact is that the the inner gutter that's along the spine, you need to have it larger than what's on the outer side. Yeah, I like um, my rule of thumb on most a lot of books, and and I don't have a template for anything because every book is a, is its own special project. But I like to have. Um, Three quarters of an inch on the outside edge, uh, and then either seven eighths or almost an inch on the inside. If the book I know the book is going to be over 300 pages, if it's a 200 page book, then I I may do seven eighths. But it makes a big difference because by every uh, book printer has a little bit different result in how they bind their books. Sometimes they'll get that those sheets up gather a little tighter, and that mm-hmm. text falls into the gutter so it it just depends Mm -hmm. so you just want to make sure you have it generous enough no i actually told someone that that i couldn't read his book it hurt my hands yeah you want to crack the spine and that's not what you want to do yeah and and you do you crack you have to crack the spine all right we've got a we've got about uh 30 seconds and we're going to our final break here but nick is there something that you could add about the just very quickly on the the headers do we we, do we put the chapter title do you what do you put up at the top the chapter title yeah i keep the left side i usually keep the left side of the header on the left side of the page the formal title of the book and then uh and on the right side, it'll be the, cha- the actual chapter that they're reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's usually that falls into that for the nonfiction books. Uh, in fiction, you can do that. If, if fiction books have chapters that have different titles, you can do that. If not, it's the left side is um, the author name, the right side is the book title. All right. All right, Kate, we're going to be right back. We are talking with Nick Zellinger, who is an award-winning uh, book and cover designer, and we are talking books and some of the mistakes and snafus that are commonly done. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Do you sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract, all equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author You and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author You deal. shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. 
Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems, you want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Okay, we're talking about some of the mistakes that people who are fairly new into publishing make and that we thought this would be the good time to transition into the good old-fashioned printing because that once you've paid for, whether you've had coaching or consulting or worked with a book shepherd um, and getting your book there, you're, you've, you've got cost there. Then you've got the whole issue of your cover design um, and you've got the issue of dealing with the interior design. And if you've had illustrations or any other gadgets that will have money cost to it, those are all factors. The big one that comes at this point Point and and is a deal breaker for some people is printing. Do I print two books, ten books, a hundred books, a thousand books, more than a thousand books? And what's the difference between digital and what's what's this thing called offset? And is there anything else out there? And how do I go about finding the people who do that? So Nick, I'm going to throw all of that out at you. I'll add to it since I you know, I go out and seek these people all the time myself. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's true, and and you assume. I mean, most authors uh, are, and I and actually I kind of like the idea of on-demand printing. There, it really has its advantages. But you know, if you are an author where you want to say, "Gee, I want to test the water, and I don't want to spend, you know, I don't want to have a thousand books or two thousand books." I mean, that's where the on-demand comes into play. The difference, in a, in a nutshell, different. The difference between offset printing and on-demand printing, aside from the large quantities that offset printing can can produce on demand obviously is for a shorter run but the really biggest technical difference is, is the uh, the equipment that it's being printed on i mean offset printing uses uh traditional printing presses like the heidelberg with real ink uh digital printing is basically toner so you've got toner versus the ink and toner is like just any just pretty much like the toner in your printer in your office I mean, obviously, a better quality. Uh, paper can play a little bit different, um, be a factor in that, because some on-demand printers only offer a small amount, like LightningSource.com, I think, offers a little wider range. Create Space has a couple of different kinds of white. I mean, they basically all offer a equivalent of a 60-pound white offset or a 60-pound natural, which is a light cream. 
and uh, lightningsource.com and create space which is owned by amazon does that and another uh really good on demand printer that i've been using for a few years is uh, snowfallpress.com and they're located they have facilities all across the country and they're it's pretty much they charge per book so you want they'll say well a 300 page book is two dollars and 95 cents or something like that so you pay for the book and then whatever printing is but in a nutshell though it's toner versus ink and there is a difference some some images some illustrations some colors may suffer a little bit with toner ink on certain kinds of paper uh there may not be uh the depth and luminosity of colors <clears throat> that with toners but at the same time we'll you know mention tom king at king printing they do a really great job with uh their digital press and a lot of these uh, larger print companies are all offering on-demand printing now, so they've all gotten into that. And, and we do need to say that um, th- that when you look for a full book manufacturer, which is, as, especially if you're going to do a larger run, you want someone. This is this is what their business is. I, I think the uh, the single visit nightmares I've run across is, and I've had it happen twice in the years I've worked with authors is that someone comes along and they think they know about printing or they do great brochures or they do, um, you know, short reports or they've done a few pamphlets and they think that they can fully produce a book of the quality that I hope that our listeners would like. And they they don't, they're a mess. That's and they're, they're, they, yeah. get, they get a mess from the quality of the, the whether it's toner they use. They, it's not even, I mean, you and I were looking at a book at the extravaganza recently, and we weren't even quite figuring out how the, the bloody thing was printed because they had all these oddball lines all over it. Yeah, um, it looked like the tr- outside trim lines were left, and they did it in some program, like maybe like pages or some something yeah. where they just outlined it. But you're right, and then, you know, the... Sometimes, and then the you know, the danger of offset ink on pages when they're um, produced quickly and then packaged up um, and not totally dry. I mean that can happen with offset too, but it seems to happen <clears throat> a little bit more, more with, with toner. Uh, yeah, toner. Yeah. Yeah, and it gets smeary. So there, there. My my uh, my concern is, and you have to pay close attention to this, is that there you have a higher probability of having an inconsistency. If you ordered a hundred or two hundred books or whatever versus just one or two books, that you have a higher probability of inconsistency just because of the nature of how they're running it and they're putting the, the book, each of these books together. Would that be true? I think experience? that's very true. I, 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 just from experience, I've done that. I've had I ordered you know fifty or hundred books from an on-demand printer, and then in about ninety days, ordered the same amount and. Uh, the quality was markedly different. Uh, paper wasn't different; just the, the actual print job was not quite right. It was uh, the black text wasn't really black text. It was more closer to 75 percent of the value of it, so it didn't have a very full, uh, you know, stamp of black toner on it. So that there's that danger. And then uh, the only biggest, the bigger issues with the cover, for instance, with on demand, is just the inconsistency of colors. They have sometimes a little difficulty printing uh, certain colors or some colors or some outputs tend to be a little redder so you've got like a warm orangey yellow goldish cover uh, and that offset printer I mean not all excuse me that on-demand printer they tend to have their output tends to be a little redder then you're going to get a deeper orange color and they can't quite tweak it they don't have the tweaking capabilities like a standard book printer will so it makes a big Mm -hmm. difference uh Especially if you've got if you've got a cover that really demands specific tones to be maintained, you know. So, uh, and I see that happening, not as much, but it does happen. Uh, so that's just those are just some of the pitfalls for on-demand printing. But obviously, um, you know, it's the affordability is in pretty enticing uh, for most people. Mm-hmm. Well, that, which brings me to the affordability, because a lot of people have. Uh, well, I mean, and if, I'm a believer. I will say this for everyone. I don't think print books are going away, and no. that I actually had a discussion yesterday with the head of marketing and the head of the review section of Forward Magazine, which does reviews 
and through their clarion, and they have a special award section for the independent marketplace. And they they really are a big supporter and promoter of print books, especially for children's books um, in, in like, and that most people need to understand, even though print e-books have certainly increased, print books are still, overall, their numbers are massive in relationship to what e-book sales are. Yeah, they're not going anywhere for a while. No. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think so. So in our three minutes, let's talk about ebooks. And we should say that as Stephen King, the Stephen King, announced just in the last this week that his new book that is just popping will not be in ebook right now. He is only doing a print run. So if you're a Stephen King fan, you're going to the bookstore. <laughs> I like that. It's like a rock, yeah. uh, you know. It's like the Rolling Stones saying, "We're just going to be printing on. We're going to be releasing on vinyl." You know, I like oh, it's, well. it's a nice, <laughs> kind of a nice. I not give a nod to him, but, but yeah, <laughs> uh, he, you know, I mean, the big question. I mean, most of authors, obviously, aside from their print run, are going to want to do an ebook. So, um, both InDesign and Quark Express, the newer versions, will output to EPUB or Mobi formats. That being said, it's not. I click and then you've got the ebook. Uh, ebook conversion still, right now, is uh, fairly laborious for some difficult books. It's not if you get somebody saying, "I'm gonna, for ninety nine dollars, I'm going to convert your book," and it's be great. Be aware that you get what you pay for because it's basically just a straight flow without any double checking of margins and and uh, there's a lot of limitations with conversions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, you know, you would expect. I mean, the running price right now for a standard book without a whole lot of graphics or uh, is around two to three hundred dollars to do a Moby and EPUB format. Um, book well, Baby is somewhere in that area, yeah. I think. Yeah, Book Baby will allow, uh, you know will allow up to so many, and yeah, I know and they that they charge extra. Yeah, adults yeah. Can, and then the big the, the big caveat to that is if you have copious amounts of graphics or difficult mm-hmm. graphics. Uh, mm-hmm. Or tables and stuff. I mean, there's some things that are automatic yeah. with the conversions, and other things have to be images. So that those are extra charges. Yeah. So get out your checkbook. Okay, Nick. We have about 35 seconds. What are the three biggest mistakes you see consistently? The consistent mistakes. The desire to do it yourself. That's probably the biggest number one thing. Uh, thinking that you can do it all yourself, and then being disappointed by the results when you they, they aren't very good. So that's okay. The first number one. A uh, second one is just more more of a technical thing. Working in your Word file and thinking your Word file is the print file, and it's not. Right. It's, your, it's your manuscript. Right. And, okay. And, and then, number three. Uh, and then, probably last but not least, is uh, you know, print authors go into two categories: hobbyists or business people. So uh, All decide right. what not, you want to be. Not Thank you. Thank you. This is your guide to publish. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles.